Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on averaging. In this presentation we're going to talk about one of the potential problems you can face with averaging and that is the situation where the, the speed of the machine varies. Now there's just a couple of things we need to look at. Hopefully you've looked at the other quick presentation on averaging so that you have a bit of an idea. But remember that the averaging process is supposed to reduce the effect of noise and give you a nice repeatable measurement and also to listen to the machine long enough that we've heard its entire story. You know, as the shaft turns and the balls roll around, there's going to be times when as those balls are perhaps spinning in the bearing, the, they'll impact sometimes, they won't other times on both races. If you've got a gearbox, there can be teeth that come into mesh just so often. So you don't want to have a measurement that's too quick. So averaging does a number of things for us. Improves our repeatability, reduces the impact of noise, and makes sure that we've heard the machine through all its sort of variation and heard its whole story. But what you may not realize is that in certain situations, the result you get after the averaging process isn't necessarily the best representation of the data. So what we're going to look at now is what happens if there is a slight speed variation uh, during the measurement acquisition time. So not the speed variation between today's measurement and the next time you take a measurement, actually during the time that the data collector or analyzer is acquiring the data. Now just as a quick reminder what happens, remember that when we average we take four spectra which have just been taken in a normal fashion, um, and we go bin by bin by bin, sort of each frequency and we average it together. And the assumption is that during that process the frequency of these peaks has not changed. So that everything in every single bin uh, relates to the same frequency from the machine. So that's all great if it is true. Now just remember that a spectrum is made up of a series of individual numbers, even though on the green it may look like one continuous line, you may just happen to think that you've got vibration at every single frequency, well you haven't. Whatever your F max is, you can divide that by the resolution you've chosen, 400, 800, 1600, 3200 lines, etc. So you have a certain number of individual numbers, uh, individual values for frequency, and the analyzer gave you those values because it did an averaging process. So, it turns out that if the frequency happens to fall in the center of one of those bins, you will get the correct amplitude. If the frequency happens to fall just on either side, you don't get the correct amplitude. In fact, for a Hanning window, it's 15% down. Now that just might seem a little bit confusing, so let me just demonstrate that to you. What we've got here is a source of vibration, just an individual frequency. And what we're looking at down here is a real close-up of a, of a peak in a spectrum. So I happen to have 800 lines and 800 hertz as my F max. And I've zoomed in from 0 hertz to 25 hertz. And each one of these little faint lines that you can see there is, is a frequency in the spectrum. Okay, so... I am generating 15 hertz, so I get a nice sharp peak right at the 15th line in the spectrum, or 15th bin, okay? And um, there's no vibration at 14, no vibration at 16, so that's, that's great. This is the perfect case where the frequency I'm generating happens to be exactly the same as one of the bins in the spectrum. 800 lines, 800 hertz, that means there's one hertz between each bin. But what happens if the machine generates vibration that isn't exactly 15? What if it's 15.1 or 15.2? The red line is showing the exact frequency, but the spectrum can only give me a value at 14, at 15, and 16. And what we get is a real mess. Now, what I'm going to do, that's called leakage. I'm going to turn on the Hanning window which improves the situation. Okay, we're not here to talk about windowing right now. It improves the situation, but watch what happens. As I change the frequency, right now I've got exactly 16 hertz, so it's nice and sharp. It's broader now. 
but it's uh, 16 hertz. But as I change, notice the way the shape of this peak changes. And if it's 16 and a half hertz, which happens to be right in the center, notice that the amplitude is much lower than it was back here. It's 15 percent lower. That's just a fact of life. That is just the way the spectrum process works when you do windowing and, and so on. The only way to improve it is to have much higher resolution, but you're still going to have it to some extent. So, what happens then is during the averaging process, let's say you're just using four averages, it's going to take the vibration from 16 hertz for all four spectra that it grabbed and average them together. Now, if the machine speed stayed constant so that there was a peak at 16 hertz always, that's great. If the vibration was always 16.4 hertz, well, okay, the amplitude's lower. We've got a little mini presentation on that particular point, but the average would be good. But what happens is if the vari if speed varies a little bit, so it goes from 16 to a little bit higher to a little bit higher during the measurement process, well, we get a little bit of variation there. And that's not too bad. If it varies within one bin, okay, there's going to be 15% uh, of variation in the amplitude and the averaging process will average that out. So it's not so bad. But what if the machine speed varies outside that band. So, if, in other words, the vibration being generated by this particular peak started out at 16.6 hertz, but then when it, the vibration, when the, when the analyzer grabs the next chunk of vibration, it's actually vibrating here now. Well, it's going to compare this amplitude, let's just go back again, this amplitude to that amplitude, or well, in fact I should really draw on the, on the grey lines. So in other words, if there's vibration in the 16 hertz bin one moment and not the next, then the average really gets messed around. And I'll show you a demonstration of that. If this is not particularly clear, then the demonstration will hopefully uh, clarify that a little bit. The point is that if the speed varies within the bin, it's not so bad, because higher frequencies are more likely to go outside the bin than lower frequencies, because it's like a constant percentage, uh, sorry, a constant width all the way across. Um, if it varies outside the bin, then we get a problem, and that's what I'll demonstrate in just a moment. So, as we saw, if, this, if the frequency varies and moves within a bin, it's not so bad. If it moves outside the bin, it's a real problem. So, let's have a look at an example of what will happen. I'm going to bring up my simulator here. It teaches everything to do with averaging, windowing, all, all kinds of things. And what I'm going to do is grab a sample of vibration you see here, and if you listen to it, in fact you can sort of see a little bit of variation even in the, this is, this happens to be 30 seconds of time waveform, let's listen to it for a second. Okay, so it's just a, sounds like an ordinary machine, but what I'm going to do is zoom in on this frequency here. So it kind of looks a bit like what we had just a moment ago, and what I'm going to do is just reveal a bit more detail here and each time I click this button over here it's going to take another little chunk of the time waveform and show me the FFT for it just as your analyzer would and just watch that peak and see if it changes at all. Notice it goes higher, it goes lower, it goes you know it's just bobbing up and down a little bit. It's doing that in part because it's falling at different points within the bin. So it's varying by the 15%, but it's also changing frequency outside those bins. So let's turn on averaging now. And what we're going to see is the orange is what the analyzer would keep as the average. Okay, um, But as I change as I go through each one, it'll leave a grey trace behind, which you'll see better on the, uh, on the big screen behind me if you're watching in that view. Um, but, so let's just go through it. One, this is the first average, second average, third average, 
fourth average. So those four grey traces that you can see in there are the four spectra individually and the orange is the average of them and you can see how the amplitudes drop down and the peak has become quite broad and in fact if we have a higher number of averages you can see that the speed is varying by quite a bit. In fact you know it's and the amplitude of this peak will reduce down it'll get fatter it, it will reduce in amplitude because it's smearing it's keeping an average of all the vibration over all those frequencies and if we kept going actually the sort of the variation drifts back and forward you can see now it's um, going back to a lower frequency sort of where it started so the trouble is that because of the uh, change in speed the averaging process is is losing the detail it's it's giving us a big broad peak with a lower amplitude and the trouble is when you look at your spectrum what do you see you only see this final orange spectrum okay whatever color it is on your software but um, you only see that you have no idea why you've got this little blobby looking peak there and you may not even expect that the machine varies in speed it might just sort of be hunting in speed but those little changes at the low frequencies cause from a percentage point of view much higher change or from a frequency point of view a higher change in these higher frequencies another little thing I'd like to demonstrate for you is this is an 800 line spectrum okay now what I have to do to demonstrate this I'll just go back to this this is the 800 line spectrum you can see its amplitude and everything well if you understand how resolution works watch what happens to the amounts of vibration I'm going to use when I go from 800 to 1600 lines I'm using more vibration and guess what happens the speed has varied more within that time so that the final spectrum it comes up with will be smeared and will be therefore lower amplitude as well if I go to 3200 lines look how low it is now because the speed varied in this time up here you see that the speed varied in that time so even with no averages I end up with this peak that's actually broader than it should be and lower amplitude than it should be because within that time it's it's varied you may not be aware that this is happening I mean with a variable speed process where the speed is varying it should be something you're aware of um, it may be something that you think ah look it'll be fine you know it's it seems fairly com constant when I'm testing it but you know, this is what's happening if it's varying very much particularly those high frequencies remember they'll smear and they will they will drop down they may be repeatable but they just don't represent anything about the true condition of the machine what should you do about it? Well, one thing is to try and do what I've just done. Sit there with your analyzer, either change the number of averages and see how the spectrum changes, change the resolution and see if there's a change. If you can watch it live, just watch and see if any of the peaks seem to be changing. Um, one option is to use peak hold averaging. Just watch this for a second if I just bring this up again. And we look at this vibration and we zoom in and I turn on peak hold average and I go through my averaging process what it's doing now is it's keeping all of the vibration during that variation and notice I, I get a much more distinct view of how the vibration changed now in theory with the normal machine your peak hold average and your normal average shouldn't vary by so much unless there's a lot of noise um, well here this would be a demonstration you know that's using peak hold average that's using linear average you see there's quite a difference between that and that so you can do that in your machine so it's just something you know with your more important machines or if you suspect a problem that's something you can do but the true solution is to do something called order tracking you need a tack signal from the machine and the analyzer actually synch synchronizes its acquisition with the speed of the machine but that's another topic altogether I hope this uh, quick presentation on averaging and one of the challenges with averaging has been helpful for you